Welcome to the Complete Apotheosis Mod Guide. I'll explain everything you see here and much more. I'm going to cover it all for you. How to get the Apotheosis Mod in Minecraft. As you can see, I have it here, okay? Here's my awesome Apotheosis Mod. To get it, check the description for a direct link. It's not as simple as installing Matilla, but here's how. Go to Files, then Mod. Choose your version, I'm using one. 20.1, select your preferred mod loader and version, alright? I've made my choices. Click the three dots, then get file. Save this file, but it's crucial to save it in the right folder. Type a percent, app data percent in the search bar. Find that, then go to the quote.minecraft quote folder. You'll see the mods folder there. If not, create one. All we need to do is right click, create a new folder and name it mods, okay? As you can see, I have apotheosis here and many more mods to help explain and make it more manageable. But what? What do I recommend? Besides this, go to relations, then all relation types, and then, uh, what? Oh, required dependencies. Okay, these are the mods you absolutely need to run the game, all right? You'll need to get these three mods one by one, okay? For example, for Apotheosis, we go to File, we go to Mod, we select Forge, choose all versions, pick the same version as Apotheosis, and click the three button. We click Get File and save it in the same folder once we've done this. If I sort this by date, you'll see that when I got the Apotheosis, besides getting the Apothic, Patchouli, and Placebo mods which are required, I also got some other interesting mods for gameplay. Also, if I remember correctly, it required me to have the bookshelf, if I'm not mistaken. What's this mold? Here? Yes, I think it did require me to have this mold right here to play it, so we need to get the book too. Well, that's it. If we want, we can move on to optional mods and get some optional ones, but this should be more than enough. I hope you enjoyed the- How do you get the guidebook? The Chronicle of Shadows. Well, you just right-click and there's the guide. I'm not sure if you need any specific mod. But truly, this is the one you need for the guide. When you create a world with this mod, you'll have the guide. If you don't have it, combine a book with a gold one to craft it. The guide covers how the mod works dungeons and spawners. It has lots of useful info to help you with the mod. So, what's up? How do we get gems? Well, to obtain gems in the Apotheosis mod, what first, there are all these gems. Each gem has its own rank. For example, this is common, this is common, this one's rare, this is epic, this is mystic, and this is perfect. Well, it'd be legendary. Each gem has its rarity and you get them by killing mobs or exploring. What do I mean by that? Basically, this mod includes, as we can see here in the section of, well, spawners have different info, but in the adventure module, we see it includes bosses, okay? And dungeons with mobs that'll spawn randomly in our world, which we'll have to kill. As we go through these processes, we'll obtain these gems. What are they used for? They help us improve our tools or armor using the salvaging table. How do you obtain gem dust? Well, basically what we need to do is get a gem. Here's how we can get gems by killing mobs or exploring. And to get our first gem dust, what we need to do is grab the gems, drop them, and have an anvil fall on them. As you can see, I've just turned these gems into gem dust. Another way to get gem dust later is by crafting a salvaging table. The thing is, to make a salvaging table, we need two gem dust. So the first time we get gem dust, it has to be this way. Once we have it, the salvaging table lets us turn any gem into dust. So how does the salvaging table work? Well, besides making gem dust, right? To craft it, you need three copper ingots, a smithing table, two gem powders, a lava bucket, an iron pickaxe, an axe. It's used to disenchant items. This item won't work, but let's try to make it useful. Let's see if it works this way. Say we just killed a boss and got this item with speed and more durability and such. You put it here, click salvage items, and it removes removes what it was. The item becomes crystal shards, okay? What are crystal shards? They're the scrap, time worn, luminous crystal, arcane, and godforged pearl. These five listed by rarity, will be used to enchant tools to the next level, basically to enchant other tools. How does the simple reforging table work? This table, made with an iron ingot, two gem powders, an enchanting table, and three smooth stones, is used to enchant various tools. For example, let's say I have this netherite sword, and I want to enchant it using the simple reforging table. It's a simple table. Basically, first of all, it requires fuel. The fuel is essentially the sigil of rebirth. This is the key element needed for enchanting. This is how you craft it. Besides that, it needs a scrap. It can be normal, rare, common, epic, or legendary. We would put the scrap in. As you can see, it won't let us use legendary or epic level scrap. For those, we'd need to use the reforging table. To use these higher level elements, we put the sword in, and it shows different ways to improve it. If we don't like it, we can change it. Or we can add more effects. It's possible to do so. Sometimes we'll lose effects, sometimes not. How does the gem cutting table work? It's this table here, made with smooth stone, scissors, gem dust, and any type of wooden plank. Basically, as you can see, it uses gem dust and rare materials to upgrade gems. So let's grab some dust and gems, for example, this common type gem, and it should allow us to place the gem. Here on the left, it shows what we need. In this case, it needs gem dust. 
so we'll add that and it says rare material i definitely need time worn fabric but i'm not sure if it's there already yes it's there that's why it let me do it oh no it's not there actually time worn fabric or mysterious scrap metal so i have the option to use time worn fabric which is this item here or three mysterious scrap metal which is this item here so let's put all the elements in place now what do i do i'll put these three i'll put one of it'd be the same the result would be identical it's like it gives us options so we click here to enhance the gem what will happen is these gems that were common will now become uncommon. If we keep this up, we'd gradually improve our gem. Are there any limitations? It's simple. We'll take the highest level gem, minus one. As you can see, it still lets us improve it a bit more. So I've taken a gem of the lawless type, and I want to make it perfect. Just know it's possible. How to add more sockets to your tool. Sockets are spaces in a tool where you can place gems, making the tool much stronger. We'll use the sigil of socketing. This tool or sigil is made with four gem dust, dragon's breath, three slate fused gems, and an amethyst. Just put your tool with a sigil on a smithing table, and there you have it an empty socket. If I recall, we can have up to three. Let's try it. Boom. We can have up to three sockets. I think that's the limit. No more after that. We can also enchant it instead. Enchant it on an enchanting table for a chance at socket. Though it's rare and depends on enchanting level and power. How do you add gems to an item? Well, we take our item, which obviously needs socket space. We can use sizzle socketing for a slot or enchant the tool and basically take our gem to add any gem to it. What we'll do is combine them in a smithing table, so that's how we do it. If we want to see the gem's attributes before adding it, we can hover our cursor over it. When socketed, it'll show for light tools, plus 50% attack speed for armor, plus 10 max health for heavy tools, plus 14 armor pieces, and for shields, plus 30% health. That's a little preview for you. Let's say we have a tool with a socket and a gem, and we want to remove that gem. For example, this one has a gem of the common type, well, very common, and I want to remove it. That's where the sigil of withdrawal comes in. We'll use our sword and sigil, and this sigil will remove the gem. It'll give it back. In older versions, it didn't. Back then, they used a potion instead of a sigil, and the potion didn't return the item. I mentioned this in case you play older versions. The sigil is crafted with two ender pearls, a lava bucket, gem dust, a blaze rod, and gem diffuse. That's it. How do we load the forge table in the apotheosis mod? Well, basically with the sigil of reverse. When using any forge table, it's crucial to place sigils of reverse here, both on simple and advanced ones, to keep them working and prevent malfunction. On the other hand, the augmentation table requires its own fuel, just like the refining table does. This is called sigil off in a here we'd have the table and we'd need to place the sigil to make this table operational and that's what it's for and how you can add fuel to the augmentation table so how does table augmentation work well this table here basically requires a sword like this one here as you can see it's already enchanted we've obtained it somehow and enchanted it, it has different attributes what i do is place it here and it lets me as you can see choose a bit what do i want to add to it okay for example, Thunderstruck. It says your attacks will deal 4 damage to nearby foes. So if I want to add it, I can. I'll click here and select improve. Now I have plus 3.75 attack damage. See the 9.75 in orange? If I upgrade now, it'll be 10, okay? It went up by 0 0.25. If I want to re-roll, I click here, okay? Here's a re-roll of all upgrades. I'll lose some attributes, okay? It doesn't show up, apparently not. I'll lose some keep other it costs xp and that's how this table works so how do we remove an object's name let's say we want to change its name for whatever reason right and we've been given this name thunderstruck iron sword of bloodletting well you take this sigil of unnaming do your thing and it removes any tools fixed name got it it's crafted with flint and six gem fused all right they're made like this and that's it that's how you can remove the name what does a turner do when we go to an enchantment table if we want to start enchanting let's say we want a pickaxe with silk touch right for example so we can break our spawners okay this spawner here for instance i want to break it with silk touch because thanks to the apotheosis mod i can keep the spawner right this feature is added by the mod so i'm going to enchant right my pickaxe and i did it shows eterna 15 out of 50 how much the arcana well what is eterna eterna is simply the enchantment level you're enchanting at the more eterna the table has the higher the enchantment level will be used how can we improve eterna well basically the only way to improve eterna is through bookshelves this bookshelf here for example gives me eterna plus one and it can contribute up to 15 at most but this one here called crystalline gives eterna plus two okay and you can have up to 15 bookshelves, which would be 30. Then we have this one, Eterna plus 3, maximum 30. And then we have more advanced bookshelves, like this one with Eterna plus 5, maximum 40. Or Eterna plus 5, maximum 40, yes. Or this one here, the Draconic End Shelf, which gives Eterna plus 10, maximum 50, which would be the absolute maximum. What does Quanta do? When we enchant, Quanta appears here, showing pure chaos. It improves randomness and reduces negative effects. The more Quanta we have, the more enchantment variety we get. Basically, it ensures we get good enchantments. In this case, 
case, I got a pretty good sword. So how can we get more quantum? Well, basically by using mob head. A zombie head, a creeper head, and a skeleton head. These are the only heads that give you quanta. They give you a 5% quanta boost. But wither skeleton heads give you 10%, so keep that in mind. I think the more you use, the better. Right now I have 15%. If I start adding wither skeleton heads without limit, I believe there's no cap. The quanta just keeps increasing. See? There's no limit. I can put as many as I want. That's how it works. What does rectification do? When enchanting, the table shows Eterna, Quanta, Arcana, and Rectification. Even if not specified. What does it do? Rectification reduces the chance of getting bad enchantment. That's its function. How can we get rectification? We can use Amethyst Cluster, which give a 1.5% rectification boost, for example. This increases rectification by 3%. 4% or 5%, so I'm not sure where it shows. There's no limit to amethyst shards. We can use as many as we want. Some bookshelves add rectification, like the shelf of ends fused, which adds 25%. Standing here, I'm at 100% rectification with just four of these shelves. This one subtracts 5%, that adds 10%, another adds 15%. The names are above, plus 25%. Plus 5%, plus 5%. Some decrease it too, keep that in mind. And that's how this element works. What does Arcana do? As you can see, when enchanting, we have this Arcana option. It makes rare enchantments more common and increases the number of enchantments. Basically, Arcana gives us more enchantments per tool and provides higher quality enhancement. How can we improve Arcana? It's improved using candle. Each candle gives 1.25%. You can stack up to 4, giving a total of 5%. If I start adding candles, Arcana starts at 0%. Now we see Arcana has risen to 20%. There are other tools like Bookshelf, Sea Shelf, and more. I won't name them all. This gives plus 2%, plus 1.75% each, plus 2%, and this one gives plus 10%. A Bookshelf can give more Arcana, plus 15, plus 5, plus 10, plus 15, plus 5, plus 5, plus 7, 5. So there are various ways to boost this element. What the club basically does is allow us to see more enchantments and enchantment info. This means when we enchant a sword, we'll see more options beyond the usual one. So how do you get the club. Here are the elements that affect the club. Blaze rods, subtract one, but eco alpha adds one, the offsite gel adds one, the master full size gel adds two. Basically each bookshelf we add in this style gives us two more levels. I'm not sure what the limit is, there doesn't seem to be much of a limit. For example, it shows us sharpness one, things the club reveal. Nothing else appears, it's simply because there's nothing more, okay? It's not that you lack element. Here I see three on it explains what the sword will have, that's what this does. How do hell shelves and sea shelves work? They actually work the same way, with different branches but similar functions. So basically how do they function? Well I'll start with the basics as I've already explained Eterna, Quanta and Arcana in other videos as well as clues and rectification. I'll assume you understand those so I won't go into stat effects as they don't. One alone doesn't change much but 15 libraries with specific stats can make a difference. We start by crafting hell or sea shelves which are made in a simple way as you can see. This potion lets you stack up to 15 libraries and enchant up to level 45. As you know the higher the enchantment level the better, then we can convert these hell shelves into infused ones. How can we infuse them? Basically we'd enchant them on an infusion table, which requires certain minimum. It needs 22.5 Eterna, 15% Quanta, and 10% Arcana. Then you can enchant and add the infusion effect. As you can see the stats improve, but it's similar at level 45 actually. Why do we want them infused? Well this allows us to upgrade to glowing and crystalline hell shells. Glowing uses infused tables with 3D glowstone. Crystalline uses prismarine crystal. These letters enchant up to level 60 with 15 bookshelves. Then we have the blazing and heart for These are the crafting rest. Once again, they're made with the infused shell. And this time it's a bit more of the same, even though the stats have improved. We get both negative and positive effect. But I think these bookshelves help us get by, because next we'll go for these, which would be the hell shelf. The hell shelf of sight is quite interesting as it gives you enchanting clues, which basically reveals the possible enchantments a tool can have. And I think this crafting is interesting to say the least. Then we have the shelf of sea bound, which gives us 10% rectification which is pretty cool too it's crafted like this. Finally, we have these two tables, an upgrade of sight giving plus two enchanting clues, which I think is overpowered. Then we'd have the shelf of hellbound giving us 10% plus 15% rectification. Rectification, if we recall, reduces the chance of getting bad enchantments, so it can be quite useful to have. Lastly, we can upgrade the marine type shelf once more to a shell of end fused rectification, giving 25% rectification, which is insane. So that's it, this wraps up this small branch of bookshelf. How do deep shelves and skulk shelves work? Starting with deep shelves, we can enchant at level 70 with just 15 libraries. As you know, the higher the enchantment level, the better. Then we have echoing shelves, which don't provide attributes. For attributes, it might be better to use sea shelves or hell shelves. But echoing shelves are useful as they're like endgame library. Obviously, they're very expensive. An echoing shelf requires an echo shard and a deep Shelf. To get a deep shelf, take a normal dormant deep shelf and enchant it. The enchantments needed to infuse
use it are incredibly demanding. It requires 30 Eterna, 40% Quanta, and 40% Arcane. So once we have this element, we'll get the Echoing Deep Shell, which is this one here, allowing us to enchant at level 75. Then we have this table that gives us plus 5 Eternal, plus 15% Quanta, plus 5% Arcana, and plus 5% rectification. It's incredible. It's already becoming very, very good. It's made with a Warden Tendril and an Assault Oach Deep Shelf, which would be... The Assault Oach is obtained this way. Seems they made a mistake with the name, but oh well. This is how you craft the Assault Oach. If there's any doubt, it's made with Skulk, with Skulk Catalyst. Finally, we have the Deep Shelf of Arcane Treasure, giving minus 10% Quanta, plus 10% Arcana, and allows Treasury Enchantment. And well, these would be the enchantment. This is how it's crafted, using two enchanted Deep Shelves. As you can see, it's very expensive. Then if we continue, we have the Skulk Shelves. We continue with the Echoing Skulk Shelf, which lets us enchant up to level 80. This is how you craft it, using an Echoing Deep Shelf. Then we'd use the Assault Oach Skulk Shelf, giving us all those effects. And this is the crafting process with an Assault Oach Deep Shelf, obtained like this, remember. It lets us enchant up to level 80. With 18 bookshelves, we can enchant to level 90. It's done this way. For Dragon's Breath Infusion, take Dragon's Breath and infuse it at the enchanting table with these spec. 40% Eterna, 15% Quanta, but no more than 25 Quanta, and we'd need 6 60% arcane, then we'd use 18 level 90 bookshelves, the pearl ascend end shell. Finally, with just 5 draconic end shelves, we can enchant to level 100. Obviously, getting all this stuff is insane. By the way, to reduce quanta, use the melon shelf, a bookshelf that subtracts stats. How do you get the warden tendril? The warden tendril, this item here, is obtained by killing the warden. Got it? I know it sounds obvious, of course, but here's the warden, and if I kill it, See how it drops the Warden Tendril? That's how we get this super useful item which lets us create the best bookshelves in the game. How do bee, melon, and stone shelves work? Basically, these three libraries subtract attributes from us. For example, the bee shelf gives us 100% Quanta, but subtracts 15 Eterna, which isn't bad. 100% Quanta for a shelf, and you can compensate for the Eterna lot. On the other hand, the melon shelf gives minus 1 Eterna and minus 10% Quanta. This could be useful for, say, the end shelf that requires making an infused Dragon's Breath, which needs 15% to 25% Quanta to create the infused Dragon's Breath. So the melon shelf might be useful in this specific situation. Then we have the stone shelf that subtracts 1.5 Eterna, and 7.5% Arcana. Basically, these are shelves that let us subtract effects when seeking lower rarity enchantment. We use these shelves to subtract. You can also break existing shelves instead of crafting new ones. How does aquatic filtration work? Well, basically, we'll grab some enchanted books, okay? For example, Respiration and Thorns, right? And basically, what we need to do is place these books inside, okay? Let's see. Okay, we place them, and these books we put in here won't appear when enchanting. Got it? On an enchanting table, we obviously need to put this box here, okay? This way we'll avoid getting useless enchantments again, basically. Here's how the obliteration enchantment works. It's applied to an anvil for enchanting. Basically, you do this, bam bam, and you can enchant the anvil. It remains functional, and what it does is allow you to split an enchantment into two lower levels. For example, if I have a breaking eight book and I use it on the anvil, bam bam, It'll split into two breaking seven books. That's all obliteration does, as you can see. I thought it could only be used once, but let me grab a pickaxe and check. If I throw the anvil down and split them, then pick this up. Well, the anvil is still enchanted, so you can use it as many times as you How does the splitting enchantment work? Basically, what it does is split a, a book. Let's take different ones. Say, fire protection and swift sneak. Okay. Now, we'll combine these books. There it is. And we'll enchant an anvil with splitting. This book with two enchantments. I'll drop here. Switch to survival so you can see it work. Drop the and It'll split this book into two separate books, each with its own. So that's what this enchantment is for. How do you disenchant in the apotheosis mod? Basically, you use the copweb. I think they've added a new crafting recipe using thread and honeycomb that lets us remove enchantments from any tool. So we take this enchanted sword, for example, and use it with the copweb web on an anvil. Here's a demo. Sean's one dot copweb comma and it disenchants it. For some reason it didn't work for me. Maybe this sword can't be disenchanted. But anyway, that's how it works. On another note though, how can we remove curses? Well, basically with a prismatic cup web, we take our sword, like this one here, then we apply the prismatic cup web on an anvil. This sword probably doesn't have curses, but for example, it can remove curse of binding from a sword. How do you craft it? With a cup web and four prismarine shards. A cup web is made with string and honeycomb. How do tomb books work? As you can see, there are tons of tomb books. There are all these different types of tomb books. Hover over each to see what they're for. This one's for helmets, helmet enchantments. Basically, with this tomb book, you go to an enchanting table, right click, and it only allows helmet enchantments. So if you have a sword book it'll only use sword enchantment it's pretty handy then there's the tomb of extraction 
which removes all enchantments without destroying the item. Make it by infusing a tomb of superior scrapping with these items here. Superior scrapping comes from infusing a tomb of scrapping. That's a quick overview of how to craft all this stuff. How do enchantment libraries work? Basically, these enchantment libraries allow me to store enchantments. I'll take Unbreaking, for example, which we already had, and store Unbreaking 8. As you can see, we've stored Unbreaking 8, with the max level available being 8. What does this mean? If I put Sharpness 1 on Sacco, it'll say max level available is Sharpness 1. Why? Because that's the highest level I've introduced. If I add Sharpness 8, introducing all levels, I can take out the Sharpness book, return the stored Sharpness book, remove it, and now instead of Sharpness 1, shift-clicking will convert Sharpness to Sharpness 3, as level 8 is unlocked. Obviously, it'll consume more. If I do it again, I'll get back the Sharpness 1. For Unbreaking, say we want Unbreaking 1, 2, or even 6 or 7. I'll get Unbreaking 6 here. That's how it works. Why are there two different tables? One stores up to 16 enchantments, the other up to 31 different ones. No matter how many tools you craft, it works like an ender chest. You can't cheat by having two tools at once, or two different tools. In the end, they'll be the same. So that's it for crafting. As you can see, it's pretty expensive. Get the Library of Alexandria, infuse it with 50% Eterna, 45-50% to Alcoanta, and 100% Arcane. How do you make the Absorption Potion? Well, basically, you need a Golden Apple for this recipe, okay? First, we'll need Water Bottle. Fill them with water, add a Golden Apple, and that's how you make the Absorption Potion. How do you get the Luck Potion? You make it with Lucky Rabbit's Foot. Start with Water Bottles, add Nether Wart, then the Lucky Rabbit's Foot. This creates the Luck Potion, giving you a plus one Luck Boost. How do you get the Mining Haste Potion? This potion makes us mine 10% faster and is made with Mushroom Stew. Mushroom Stew needs a bowl, brown and red mushrooms, plus Nether Wart. How to get the Mining Fatigue Potion? We're not interested in drinking this potion, but rather in throwing it. It gives 8 minutes of Mining Fatigue, minus 10% attack speed and the mining fatigue effect so it gives us the mining fatigue effect as well as we can see there are two ways to obtain this mining fatigue potion using a haste potion with a fermented spider eye or simply getting a mining fatigue potion and that's it nothing more just make a haste potion with mushroom stew add a fermented eye and you've got it let's talk about the resistance potion this potion adds protection against all types of attacks you'll need a shulker shell to make it got it of course we'll need it. how do you get the wither effect potion we're going to apply three minutes of wither to someone that's insane if that doesn't kill you i don't know what will we want to make this wither potion throwable but it lasts three minutes it's made with a wither skeleton skull first we need another wart then the wither skeleton skull to make this wither potion how do we get or obtain this noble anson potion basically it improves the experience we get from killing right it gives 400% more XP from blocks and is made with an enchanted bottle, okay? You can get the enchanted bottle by taking a honey bottle and infusing it. This can be done on an enchanting table, got it? If we have a honey bottle and 50 eternal, 25% of 40, 25% arcana on our table, we'll get 32 XP bottles for several 400% XP potions, plus we'll need a network. How can we get the healing boost potion? This potion is made with sweet berry, it boosts healing by 20%, and is crafted using nether wart and sweet berry. How is the healing reduction potion made? Basically, it'll cause a bleeding effect that reduces healing by 40%. We want to make this throwable potion for our rival. It can last up to 12 minutes. This potion is made with healing boost potions, okay? We add a fermented spider eye, which gives the reduction effect. How do you make the sandering potion? This potion increases damage taken. We want to make this potion throwable, and it's based on the resistance potion. The resistance potion is made with a shulker shell, nether wart and another shulker shell. Sandering's potion take resistance potions and add a fermented spice. This creates a potion that makes us take more damage. If we make it throwable it'll cause opponents to take more damage. I'm not sure of the exact percentage but probably 10, 15 or 20 percent. How to get lucky rabbit food which is basically dropped by rabbit. Okay. Basically rabbits drop it like hens lay eggs. Remember rabbits love carrots all right. A smart way is to lure rabbits with carrots and trap them like this okay. You attract the rabbit then try to trap. Keep in mind rabbits will keep running from and that's it just wait for the rabbit food to drop. How do you get any charm? These are basically necklaces. Press E to equip them and you'll have the charm ready. To use it right click for example this one's night vision. Right click and you get night vision. If I, I go underwater you'll see I can see much better. I just put it on here and it's equipped and working and now I have night vision constantly working. So these charms. Well I'm going to turn it off right clicking again these charms are made with blaze powder and three potions of the same type there are charms for literally all potion effects in this mod from the apotheosis mod and these are all the charms that is it's incredible some effects can't be charms like instant health damage or slowness turtle master's potion but all others can be charms giving you practically permanent potion effect how to make a charm 
unbreakable. Charms are these necklaces we can craft that give us various effects to make it unbreakable. Basically, if I go to an anvil, I can add unbreaking three, okay? You can enchant it with unbreaking three for all charm, but I can also infuse it, alright? If I have 50 eternal, 8.5% to 13.5% quanta, and 32.5% to 37.5% arcana, I can infuse my charm. This makes it infinite, meaning it never breaks, giving me potion effects from the necklace forever, which is amazing. How do all the arrows in the Apotheosis mod work? There are different types of arrows, like the Obsidian Arrow, which deals 25% more damage. It's important to note that not all arrows are crafted using the crafting table. If I press R, you'll see that crafting an arrow requires one stick and one feather, and it deals 20% more damage. We also have the Fire Arrow, which is crafted using Blaze Powder and an arrow it explodes upon impact There's also the broadhead arrow which inflicts the bleeding status effect on the target for 15 seconds bleeding continuously damages the target similar to poison it's crafted with an iron ingot a stick and a feather finally we have the iron mining and diamond mining arrows which are primarily used for breaking blocks well there are blocks that look breakable with an iron pickaxe and others with a diamond one the crafting recipe is an iron pickaxe a stick and a feather when shot it can break blocks right for diamond ones it gives you 24 and a feather so you can see how it all works, okay? And how they all function. Let's go test them here, alright? I'd like some chip. Let's see, I'll chip the first arrow. I think it'll be obsidian, so let's go. There, as you see, we've killed it in one hit, okay? Next is explosive. The blast isn't huge, but it's cool to have. Then comes broadhead, which gives us bleeding effect. Let's see if I don't kill it in one shot. Look, it's still bleeding. Well, as you can see, the ROM isn't useful for attacking, right? I thought it'd work for attacking. It didn't matter if it shot downward. There's a spot I'm curious about. Let's see how far the skirt reaches. This is what it might. It might be interesting to have if you're wondering about infinity. If you're asking if it'll let you shoot endless arrows, I'd say probably not, but let's test it. And there it is, clearly doesn't work. Look at the mess we've made with just a a couple of pickaxe arrows not bad eh? i mean it's not bad but it'd be cooler if it did more right so that's how these work how does the ender lead work basically this ender lead is made with a lead an ender pearl and a gold ingot here's info the ender lead is an item used to move animals from one place to another hit the animal to capture it and right click to release it so we'll left click the animal to catch it and right click to place it it works with a warden summon warden boom boom and as you can see well no i'm sorry but i guess there'll be entities like dragons where you can't do this for obvious reasons. So let's turn off the warden, that's how this lead works. How does Berserker's Fury enchantment work? It's a chest only enchantment with a max level of 3 I believe. There you have it. When hit, it enrages us, increasing our damage output. That's what this enchantment does. How does the Chromatic Aberration enchantment work? It's an enchantment exclusively for shears, as we can see. What this enchantment does is that the wool we obtain will change colour randomly. For instance, this white sheep gave me these varied wool colors. What does the chain enchantment do? It's an axe enchantment that when breaking a tree, I don't have one here, but now I've got it, see? So you use the chain, break, and the whole tree falls, got it? It's like using a tree capitator mod. What does the crescendo balls enchantment do? Okay, it's an enchantment up to level five that applies to crossbow. It lets you shoot additional times with each reload where it's enchanted, got it? To give you an idea, Here's how it works. At level 5, when I reload, I can shoot 5 extra arrows. It's pretty overpowered, honestly. It'd be cool if Minecraft had this. How does the Boon on Earth enchantment work? Okay, it's an enchantment that's for... Well, it doesn't say who it's for. I don't quite get why, but I think it's for Pico. Alright, the max level of this enchantment is level 5. Got it? And basically, as it says here, ores are likely to be found when mining rock. It's pretty clear what it does. In survival, if you mine rock, there's a chance you'll get ore when breaking rock with this enchantment. The it just gave me coal, did you notice? And it does the endless quiver enchantment. It's a bow enchantment. I think it only has one level. Let's enchant the bow as an example. Basically, it makes arrows infinite. If I use modded arrows, like explosive ones, which normally run out, they won't. Which honestly is pretty awesome to be able to do. You might ask, is this enchantment compatible with mending? Well, yes, it actually is. So it's basically overpowered. This is insane. This is absolutely crazy, basically. How does the worker exploitation enchantment work? There's only one level, and it's for shears. The enchantment doubles the wool we get, but our sheep takes damage. So we right-click, get tons of wool, six pieces, but our sheep gets hurt. How does the ice enchantment work? It goes up to level five, right? It's an enchantment that slows attackers. I think it's for tools like swords. See, it's there. As you can see, it says it'll slow them down. Doesn't seem to give extra damage, just an effect. Well, I don't have a way to test it, but that's what the enchantment does. Growth Serum has a 50% chance of instantly regrowing wool for sheer. When you right-click to get wool, there's a 50% chance it'll regrow immediately. What does the Noble Deeds enchantment do at level 3? Basically makes enemies drop items directly. Or does it convert drops directly into experience about enemy drops? 
If I use this enchanted sword on a zombie, you'll see it doesn't drop anything. You might say, but zombies don't drop rotten flesh normally. Well, they do, but this converts it to X. What does Life Mending 3 enchantment do? Basically, it's an enchantment for any type of tool, as we can see. It works especially well for all kinds of tools. Let's put it on the sword, and it consumes, it uses the regeneration we get to repair tools. There's not much more to explain, really. Normal mending repairs tools with mob experience. This mending repairs with regenerated health instead of experience. How does the miner's fervor enchantment work? It obviously looks like an enchantment for pickaxes and there we have it for any type of tool you can mine with and basically it says you'll mine very fast but never instantly so it's like let's see I'll mine and indeed you mine very fast but never instantly I'd like to know it. And now I apply a haste effect if it's programmed so I can't mine instantly. And indeed you have that small nerf that no matter how efficient you are, you'll mine fast, but never instantly. So, well, they nerfed us. I'll set haste to 250 so you can see it won't let you insta mine, you know. When here you can with your hand, but with the pickaxe it won't let you. How does the nature laying enchantment work? It's a level 7 enchantment, okay? Basically it can be applied to hoes and is used for a specific purpose. It's used to make crops grow faster, got it? By Enchant this and place it like so, then plant a crop you'll see. Look, it lets you grow crops instantly. Right clicking doesn't affect grass though, so that's its main use. As you can see, the rebounding enchantment goes up to level 5 and basically makes swords or melee attacks reach much further. I guess if I now have 3 reach with this, I could attack from further away. I'll use a normal sword and summon a zombie. Theoretically, the normal sword can't reach here and neither can this one. It can also be applied to armor. Maybe it's more useful for defense than attack. They say melee attackers will find themselves pushed much further away. So if I equip this, I should be further away. Obviously the description is a bit vague, but theoretically it should be an enchantment for armor rather than tools. What does the reflective defense enchantment do? It's an armor enchantment that basically blocks attacks and can damage the attacker. In other words, blocked attacks can harm the attacker. Got it. So it deflects incoming attacks, potentially hurting the person who attacked us. How does the scavenger enchantment work? It goes up to level 3 and basically makes killed mob roll their loot tables twice. It's an enchantment that lets us re-roll light drop. So if we're not satisfied, that's basically what it does. How does the shelled blush enchantment work? Oh, it's already at level 7 and basically it empowers the damage done by shield. If these are the shields, you can theoretically take this enchantment and equip it. And if there are other damage dealing enchantments, this way we'd get more damage output with the shield. What does the spear fishing enchantment do? Basically it kills with a trident that's been thrown. In other words, a launch trident can catch a fish. Honestly, I don't see much use for this to be fair. Obviously I understand it must have the loyalty enchantment. I'm not sure if it needs to be thrown in a specific way. Let's see. Oh, there it is. Look, we caught a fish. Killing the mob gave me cooked fish. That's weird. What if I go physical? Even in physical, it's the same. I have to shoot it. Let's see. Nothing this time. It didn't give me anything. This time it gave me another fish. Well, that's what this enchantment does. What does Steven's footing enchantment do? Basically, it negates the mining speed penalty. It counters the penalty when flying. I think it's for boots, right? Indeed, I'm not sure if it's just for boots or any armor. Let's see. Not just for boots. So I'll equip it. Okay, so you can see what it does, but basically, if I stand here and start mining, right, this block and I jump, you'll see it takes longer to mine. Normally it's faster. So if I jump while mining, it should be the same speed as normal, and it is. What does the capturing 7 enchantment do? Basically, capturing goes up to level 7. It's an enchantment that gives mobs a small chance of dropping their spawn egg. At level 7, the probability must be quite high. As you can see, it costs 28 levels to apply. It's no joke of an enchantment. If I kill a zombie now, I have a small chance of getting its egg. Obviously, I don't know the exact chance. I'm just killing for demonstration. But why? Why do we have this enchantment? Or why do we want it? Well, with this apotheosis mod, we can mine a spawner. It's this element here. We can mine it with a silk touch picker and obtain the spawner itself. It's not dropping the egg now, but trust me, I've seen it work elsewhere. If I break a spawner with a silk touch pick, I get the spawner. This doesn't happen in vanilla Minecraft. So if you have the spawner, you can customize the mobs it spawns. How does the temptation enchantment work? Basically, what it does is it makes nearby farm animals animated. For example, a sheep. Ah, so animals follow you. Oh, I see, I see. That's what it does. I thought the definition was odd. It basically makes them follow me. If I remove the hoe from my hand, see how it stops following. If I hold it again, it's like I have food they like. That's basically what it does. What does the Bane of Illigas enchantment do? It goes up to level 10 and seems quite important, making Illigas take more damage. I don't get why Illigas are so important, since they're just villagers and pillagers, and you don't encounter pillagers that often. Anyway, let's grab some weapons, let's get a pillager and see. Is there anyone with Illigas? Illager, and theoretically in one hit. There it is, almost dead in one hit. It really does more damage, but for a Ravager, let's see weapon. Normally we do 12 damage with a crit, and with this we do 12 too, so it doesn't affect Ravager. Well, that's what this enchantment does.
I hope you enjoyed this guide. Don't forget to subscribe. See you in future videos.